So as usual, uh, we are going to start on our backs just to warm up through the spine and do a few rounds of arch and flatten. If this is new to you, um, I'll walk you through it fairly quickly, but uh, do go over to my channel and look up some of my older videos where I go through the movements um, in more detail. So lying on your back with your feet on the floor, knees bent, arms relaxed on either side of your body with the palms facing up or on the pinky finger side of your hand, whatever is most comfortable. You just want to make sure the chest is feeling nice and open. So just take a moment here to get grounded a little bit, noticing your quality of breath, where it is centered, if it's down in the belly or more up in the chest. And you can bring your hands to your belly if you like, just to get a bit more feedback. We'll take a nice deep breath in through the nose and fill the belly. And exhale through the mouth and let everything go. And again, inhale through the nose. Just feel those muscles expand through the diaphragm, low belly. And then let them fall as you exhale. One more time, inhale, starting to settle down the nervous system with every breath. And exhale, release. Just noticing how your body's feeling in general today. You can release your hands to either side. Just notice how your back feels against the floor. Make sure your shoulders are away from your ears and your shoulder blades feel nice and flat against the floor. And on our next inhale, we're going to roll onto our tailbone and let the low back arch away from the floor. Contracting through those low back muscles. And then slowly let gravity bring you back down one millimeter at a time. Gradually letting those muscles relax. And then use your exhale to do the opposite motion, flattening the low back against the floor. You should feel a nice lengthening through the low back. Try not to squeeze your bum muscles. Keep them relaxed and engage through the low belly muscles instead. And then very slowly let those muscles release, allowing your pelvis to come back to neutral and starting position. You can just breathe normally between each um, release. On your next inhale, rolling onto the tailbone again, arching the low back against away from the floor. And then slowly let the muscles relax and come back to neutral. And then use your exhale to flatten the back against the floor. Slowly release. And we'll do a few more rounds just in your own time. Find a nice even flow between that arching motion and the flatten, like a nice undulating wave in the ocean. noticing the nuances in your own body where the muscles might feel a bit sticky. And just slowing down more through those areas. Avoiding the temptation to rush. We'll do the last flatten here. And then you can let your legs extend for a moment. And just notice how your body feels. And then we'll slide the feet back in. And we'll work on the 
at front of the hips, the hip flexors, doing some hip raises. So you're going to be bringing attention to your right front hip, gently pressing into your right foot as you lift your right hip off the floor just a little bit, a little tiny micro movement, just feeling it through the front of your hip, maybe down into your lower abdominals on the right side. So you shouldn't be squeezing your bum here. If you are, you're going up too high. Just try to drop down and lift ever so slightly so you feel just that engagement through the front of the hip. And then just let it release and come down. Relax completely. And again, slowly lift the right hip off the floor. The left side should be relaxing as much as possible, although you may feel a bit of engagement crossing over there. And then slowly release and let it drop to the floor. You might already start to notice that your right hip feels like it's falling down a little lower than the left after each release. We'll do that one more time on this side, lifting the right hip up. Just imagine trying to move that right knee away from you as you have gentle pressure in the foot and lift the hip up. It can take a little bit of getting used to if you haven't done this much, but don't worry. If it feels weird, just do your best and relax and let it go. Then we'll do the left side. Lift the left hip up off the floor. You might notice the side feels a little different. My side's a little stiffer, so it feels like a little more work to get it up there. And then release, let go. And again, lift it up. It's really not very far off the ground. Like, if you shove your hand to go under your bum, it would barely go under. And then let it go and release. And one more time, lift. And let it go. And slide your feet out again. And just notice how your back feels against the floor. If anything's shifted already. And then bring those feet in again. And we're going to work on the rotators. So walk your right foot in towards the left. So it's your foot's in line with your center line of your body. And we'll slowly let that knee drop out to the right, about halfway between the floor and your starting position. So we're not coming out into a stretch, we're keeping it active. And then just come up about an inch or two back towards center, but not all the way. And then slowly let it drop out just a little bit more. Slowly up again. I'm just drawing like a half a rainbow with the right knee going up and down between the floor and the bent, um, the knee towards the ceiling position, but we're not going all the way up or down, just a couple inches gradually getting a little lower towards the floor each time and not coming up quite as quite as high each time so I'm working in a two inch window as we gradually open the knee out a little further so you should feel activation through the inner thigh and coming into the kind of hip socket where the leg bone the femur comes into the pelvis Breathing normally here, don't hold your breath. And then once you feel like you're about as far out as you can go, where it might be starting to feel like a stretch, just let it completely drop and then slide your leg out and let it extend and relax completely. Take a moment, just notice how that's feeling in that side. And then slowly slide it back in, and we'll do the same thing on the left side. So walk your left foot in this time, letting the knee drop out about halfway again. And same thing on this side, slowly rocking up and down with the knee, just a couple inches at a time.
gradually getting lower towards the ground. Just noticing if this side feels be a little easier or a little more shaky. Just shows you which side you're holding a little more tension in if there is any difference. The more shaky it is, the more tension there is. So you want to do a little bit more on those tighter sides. So we'll just finish up the side, gradually getting closer to the floor, and once you are as far as you can go, just let that completely drop, slide the foot out, and let it completely relax. If you want, you can extend the right leg as well, and just notice how things are feeling. slide the feet in and we'll work on the outer uh, rotators now so crossing the left leg over the right try to keep your thighs close together here and using the weight of your left leg you're gonna let your knees drop over to the left side and you're gonna resist the urge to drop into a twist so resisting with that right leg start to rock up again towards that starting position you should feel it nice and active through the outside of your right thigh and into your hip. And just again, same thing, we're rocking up and down. Just within a comfortable window where you feel you can keep in control without straining. Resisting gravity as you go up and down. Maintaining activation. You know, it's really tempting to go and do a stretch here, but for somatic movement, we don't want to stretch. We want to keep it active and then fully release at the end. Keep breathing, nice deep breaths to the nose. Just a few more on the side, up and down, gradually getting a little closer to the floor. Your version may look different than mine, it just depends on how uh, flexible you are. Whatever feels best for you. And once you're as far as you can go comfortably, uncross those legs and let them extend. And relax completely. Just notice how things are feeling in your hip area, on that side. And then we'll slowly bring the feet in again and do it on the other side. So cross your right knee over the left. And then slowly let the knees drop to the right. Resisting gravity with that left leg this time, going up and down. You might feel it all the way up into your lower back a little bit, that's fine, just as long as it doesn't hurt. Just don't go down as far if you feel any strain. Again, nice deep breathing. Your hip is going to be coming off the floor as you do that, so don't worry if you're feeling that your hips are twisting a little, that's normal. So explore the, the movement a few more times on this side. And then you can uncross those legs and let them release and extend. So now we're going to flip over onto our stomach and do some hamstring releases. <clears throat> so you can either rest your forehead on your hands or you can rest on one cheek. 
um, looking to one side, whatever is most comfortable. I'm gonna go with my forehead on my hands. And then bring your attention to your left leg, and you're gonna bend at the knee about halfway between uh, 90 and the floor, so about 45 degrees. You should feel that activation through the back of your thigh. You might feel it into your glute. And then very slowly let the foot come back down to the floor. Once it touches the floor, completely relax and let go. And we'll do that two more times. Slowly bend the knee. And then slowly let the foot come back down. Once your foot touches the floor, relax and let it go. You can shake it out if you want. I'm not doing any special breathing for this, but if you do want uh, a particular breathing method, I would suggest um, using your exhale to bend. And then as you lower, you can slowly just breathe normally as you let it slowly come down. The main thing we want to do is just not be holding our breaths. And completely relax. And then we'll target the, the hamstrings on the uh, outside of the, uh, the outer hamstrings. So rotate your hip outwards so that your knee and foot point out away from you. So my left leg is rotating, my left knee and foot are pointing outwards. And I'm going to bend at the knee again, same thing here, about halfway, 45 degree angle. And then slowly let the foot come down. You might find more shaking. The outer hamstrings are usually tighter, but not always, depends on your body. And release and let go. Don't let those muscles completely melt down. And we'll do that again, lifting. And then slowly lower. And relax. Let's rotate the hip the other way now, so pointing the toe and knee in. We won't go that far in, but that's the aim. So imagine you're trying to rotate that leg inwards as you bend again at the knee. Keep those toes pointing in as you slowly lower, targeting the hamstrings that go along the inner part of the thigh now. And release and let go. And do that again on the side, putting that toe inwards. And just noticing how this rotation feels, if it's more intense, less intense. You'll want to do an extra repetition on whatever angle is the tightest. So just do that on your own time. Completely relax when you touch the floor, and we'll do the other leg so you can rotate your left leg to just be neutral and relaxed. And now we'll start with the right leg, bending at the knee about halfway, 45 degrees, and then slowly letting the foot come down. Relax and completely let it go. And we'll do that again. We usually do about two to three repetitions per angle. I think I did three in the center line on the other leg, so we'll do that on this side as well. One more time. And when your foot touches the floor, completely relax, let it go. 
And then we'll slowly rotate out that right leg so the knee and foot face out. And then bend at the knee. And then I notice how this leg feels compared to the other. And this outer portion of the hamstrings at the back of the thigh. I'm going to do two repetitions on this one. Just find your own rhythm that works for you. As long as we're going very slowly. So we can try to target all those muscle fibers. Let that relax and then we'll rotate the toes in. And we'll do two repetitions on this inner rotation. And again, as you practice this on your own, you can always add more repetitions on whatever tight areas you have. And relax completely once you touch the floor. Got one more here. And slowly release with control. And relax. And we're going to slowly roll over onto our backs again. And once you're on your back, just notice how your body's feeling, if anything's changed. My back's feeling a little less compressed. My hips feel maybe a little lighter or closer to the floor. And we're going to finish off with some hamstr or some quadriceps releases. So we'll bring the feet in again. And bring the right knee to hover over your right hip. And just let that foot relax downwards. And now we're going to slowly extend the right leg up. Just as straight as you can. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. The main thing is making sure your knee is over your hips, so if you need to keep your knee bent in order to do that, that's fine. You should feel an activation through the front of your thigh as you straighten, and then very slowly start to let that knee bend with control, keeping that knee over your hip, gradually letting the foot come back towards your bum. And then, once you get down there, just let it hang and release, keeping that knee over the hip. And we'll extend the leg again, slowly. Don't shoot it up there, just a slow, controlled extension. Feeling that activation through the front of the thigh as you straighten or go towards straight. Just check in and make sure that knee is still over the hip. And then slowly release with control, slowly begin. It's tempting to rush through with this one. Especially in that last little bit there, you just kind of want to let the foot drop, but try to control it all the way down. And then release, keeping that knee over the hip. One more time, extend the foot. Extend the leg. And then we'll slowly let it bend again. And relax. Let the foot hang. And then we can let the foot come down. So let's extend the legs both and just check in, relax. We'll do that on the other leg when you're ready. Slide your feet in. And bring that left knee to hover over the hip. And then start to straighten that left leg. Again, this leg might be different than the other. Just respect where you're at. Just don't push it to be any kind of particular shape. We'll start, slowly start to bend the knee again. Letting those quadriceps muscles in the front of the thigh like them. And really 
release and let that foot hang. Make sure that knee's over the hip. You can always hang on to your pant leg or something to help if you find it difficult to keep your knee there. Or you can hold your thigh towards, uh, hold your thigh with your hand. You don't want to be struggling to keep it there. And then slowly extend that knee or leg again. Straighten the knee. Don't use me as reference, just go as straight as is possible in your body. Slowly releasing that leg again. And relax that foot down towards the thumb. We've got one more on the side, I think. <laughs> Extending. So I'm just keeping this one basic, but you can experiment with rotating your toes out or in just to target the different muscles of the quadriceps on either side like we did with the hamstring. But this works uh, for a quick release through the quadricep. Just letting the foot come all the way down. And then once it's done there, completely let it relax. Put your foot on the floor. Let's give ourselves a nice big hug if you want. Bring those knees in. Stretching through the low back. Maybe giving yourself a little massage through the low back, rotating your knees, making circles with the knees. Other direction. Let those feet come down. Extend the legs. And just notice how you're feeling again, taking a nice deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And you can stay here as long as you like in this Shavasana position before you get going with the rest of your day, I encourage you to take a few steps around your space slowly and mindfully. Notice how your lower body is feeling now that you've done some work on it. How your low back feels, how your hips feel, your legs. I hope they are feeling better and good. And until next time, keep moving deeply and I will see you on the mat again soon. This class is actually part of my membership program. So it's a monthly membership where you'll have access to a growing library of not only videos like this, but also guided meditations, uh, monthly live sessions uh, with other fellow members um, joining me live uh, with uh, requests and just going through things together. And uh, also, um, I have a monthly, um, at the beginning of each month, you'll get uh, a journal guide just to help you plan your movement for the, for the month and get a little deeper into the practice of restorative movement um, that we practice with Move Deeply. So if that sounds interesting to you, uh, be sure to um, head over to movedeeply.com slash membership and you can sign up for the waitlist if membership isn't open or uh, if I am doing a round of membership intake, then uh, you'll be able to find that out on the website. So I would love to see you as a Move Deeply member someday. If you find these videos useful and you'd like a more comprehensive program to help keep you on track uh, in a growing community of people like you who enjoy this type of practice, then uh, be sure to drop over there and we'll hope to see you there sometime. So thanks again for joining me today. Keep moving deeply and take care.